Right, what have we got to do? It's another headlamp. I mean, I, I feel like I'm forever doing headlamp reviews. I've just finished the one for the uh, Lumen Top recently. That was the last one that I tested and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But this one is about the Luminate. Now I had never heard of Luminate, um, but I'm glad that one of the subscribers, and if I can find it, I get hundreds of messages and I try and keep up with them, but if I can find out who it is, I'll stick them down there. Um, so thank you for the heads up. Um, I was able to speak to someone at Luminate and they were very kind enough to send me this uh, tester unit. So I received this tester unit free of charge. So bear that in mind. But as you know, I always tell the truth in, in my reviews because if you don't, people can tell. People are not stupid. And I've always said this, people in the comments know more than I do. Um, and you'll know that that's, that's probably the case most of the time. So I was very excited to test this because I'd never heard of Luminite. I mean, Luminite to me sounds like something um, you would collect on uh, Terraria, um, which I haven't played for a while. I must play that again soon. But anyway, moving on with the review. So this one is from a company in Finland. Now, Finland isn't just famous for being extremely beautiful, um, being the home of uh, Yanni Hussi and those strange pasties with no tops on. That's not all that Finland is famous for, well, apart from great fishing and chainsaws and things like that. But um, one of the things it's famous for is this company here, so Luminite. So I think they've done an exceptional job, but we'll go through it and I'll break it down and I'll explain what I do like and what I don't like, um, and what I'll give it a mark out of 10. So without further ado, let's get into here. In fact, I'll, I'll show you some of this stuff on the back there. So it maxes out around 12,000, uh, sorry, 1,200 lumens, so 1,200. I think their internal testing was something around one, two, three, eight. Um, as a maximum but that was a proper test it's not like these Chinese manufacturers where they just give you any old figure and it's close to that I actually believe this figure is obviously correct on this uh, and it does it does bear up where in testing with the other ones so let's have a look so battery and charger included nice to see so this is a one that you can charge when it comes to headlamps uh, being able to charge them and use them at the same time are a massive help especially when you're on multi-day hikes and you haven't used it for extended periods of time. So that's interesting to see. And I'm very impressed with this five-year warranty. Excellent, well done. I like to see this. And those are the ratings, but I'll go over them. 1.5, that's just the drop rating. You have the um, the weight there, and then that is your IPX rating. But I'll go over those, because let, let's get this open. So it's the Luminite, and it, the model number, or the model name for this, is the Compass R. Um, they do loads of different models. Um, you, you know, I'll put their um, website in the description if you want to go and have a look because they do a lot of stuff. So let's get everything out and let's see what you get. Here. So, like I say, 1200 maximum, but it does have other modes. So nothing else in there. Bush, get rid of that. So there's the instruction manual. Now I'll put that to one side. I can't be bothered to read that because I never do. Uh, this is the headband. Now, a massive, massive, massive thing um, I really liked about this, but I'm going to cover that eventually when we get to using the light. There's your charging uh, method. So what this is, is this is a magnetic charging method. So put them all to one side and we'll start with the boring stuff. So boring stuff first. So you get spare, spare O-rings, you get two. That's about commensurate with most of the lights now you get two. Now, the reason for that is it's to increase waterproofing or in fact guarantee it to a, a expected level and the o-ring will go between the threaded sections so if we zoom in there you can see there i'm going to move that with my finger you see i'm moving the o-ring there so that goes between the threaded sections and it ensures waterproofing so we'll zoom back out there so nice to see and the threads are exceptional on this very very well made piece of kit and um, i was very impressed um, nice piece of kit so nice to see that they're spare because sometimes um, on certain lights, they can th they, when you're trying to thread them together, they can split and shear. Okay, so you've got them if you want them. It also comes with a pocket clip, which is nice to see, and it's deep carry. Well, deep carry-ish, and I'll explain why. So you can clip that on like that. Now, it does have this extra loop here, but it's not full deep carry. So if you imagine your pocket would go up to this, so there is going to be a protrusion if you put it in a pocket. But a lot of people will use this to clip onto molly webbing and things like that, pals webbing, whatever you prefer to call it, like your tactical stuff. Um, so I found that quite useful. I used it on a shirt pocket as well and jeans pocket, no problem. Nice clip. 
it's got enough tension but not too much where you're you know grappling to try and get it in like some sort of wwf wrestler it does work um and it comes on and off nicely and nice to see when you bring it on and off it's not knacking the paint so i'll zoom in there on this section so as you can see the paint i've taken that on and off multiple times it's still doing extremely well it's very very thick coating on this uh, which is the anodization some people call it paint but it's the anodization in other words it's the coating that they put over the onto the aluminium which this is made out of and it's it's held up really good it's similar to the uh, jet beams in other words it has a very thick coating it's been very difficult for me to find any little dings i mean look look it still looks brand new on the bottom there and um, there's a few little dings there's one no let's see if i can find any i can't really see any there's one is that yeah, there's one there where I dropped it a bit um, and knocked it. So one tiny little thing, but the, the, the coating has held up very, very, very well. So I'll give you a close look at the unit here. There's your button. It's got a metal bezel there. And these are your heat sink sections, really. Um, this helps dissipate heat, but we'll go over heat later on. And as you can see, it is a TIR, but again, we'll go over that as well. So slight heat sink design here. And excellent, it's got a nice button, it's slightly recessed as you can see. So, and there's not much actuation needed there, it goes on and off if you can hear it. Very little needed, but I haven't ever, I mean, I've carried this for about two weeks, I haven't yet anyway, I haven't been able to knock that by accident. But there is a lockout, and we'll go over that function anyway. Um, but I've been very impressed so far, so put that down. So, we've discussed the pocket clip, get rid of that. This is your charging method, so we'll go over that. So I'll use the X-Star charger here. So your Type A um, connector for USB goes into any USB here. So in there, and we'll see what output we're getting here. And then all you do is you just bring this near. Now green means it is not charging or the battery is full. And if you just bring it close, clip, there you go. And this should turn red there you go red means charging green means it's finished so let's see what it's drawing at this moment in time okay so not a lot um it's probably near full anyway it's only taking about 0 0.1 of an amp there it does charge at five volts i noticed in the literature they were saying it can charge up to 1.5 amps if you've got the output there um and you're going to charge the thing in about three hours on their battery based on their figures, they're not my figures. They're, it's probably around there, as long as you're getting a high amp output. So it does charge like that. And like I say, it changes color when it's done, and you just take it off. So very, very simple. If you have this set up already, when you come into the house, you can just, you can literally just, boof, charge. When you're finished, take it off. I really like that system. And just so you know, which is very handy on headlamps, it does run and charge at the same time. So. There's a charge going in there, ignore that figure there. So about 0 0.2 of an amp there, five volts. So that is charging, but whilst it's charging, you can still use it. You see there, that's red, it's charging, but you can still use it. Now you're probably thinking, well, why would you want to do that? Well, it means you can carry this somewhere near your like top pocket, for example, have this still on your head and in use and on while you're charging. That's a, that's a, a really, really handy feature, which I like. So that's your mag charger. It's very similar to the other designs. I mean, compare it to the ones used by the um, Army Tech company. Um, it's certainly smaller. It reminds me of, if I can find one, there it is, Olight. So Olight has a type A and then that's their mag charger there. So very, very similar. So this is the Olight on the right, and this is the Lumentech on the left. Sorry, Luminite on the left. So very, very, very similar. The only real difference is the Olight has um, a protrusion which goes into a, a, a more of a hole. But very, very similar system there. Okay, so moving on from that, let's see what else you get here. Now, I wasn't sure what this was, even though on the box it says something about belt clip. I'm not sure what that's for, but I don't use that. Um, now, this is the headband section, which I like, and it's a three-pointer. So by three-point, what I'm referring to is this goes around the circumference of the head, and it's adjustable. You can adjust it with this. Very, very easy to adjust. I really liked it. Um, and this goes over the top of the skull, over the top of your head. And again, this gives you a, a nice, stable base. I like a three-pointer, especially when these things are getting heavier. You get less jiggle, especially if you're doing night hiking or night running, if, you're really, if you really want to twist an ankle. Um, but this is the bit that I like. 
Now before I show you this, I want to show you the other design so you can understand why I like this. Okay, so we'll go to a simple design. So if we go to something like the Astrolux uh, or the Convoy H1, in fact, is it the Convoy? Let's have a look. I'll show you the light that that's uh, for. So that'll be the Convoy H1. So perfectly acceptable, but cheap. Okay, and it does the job. But look, this is floppy and useless. So what happens is it hangs from the head, it flops forward, it's a, it's a, it, it works, but it's a nuisance getting this in and out. It's a pain in the backside, basically. So cheap, and this is like Granny's Knicker Elastic, useless, it flops all over the place, and it, it, it doesn't feel secure. Okay, so that that's something I don't like. Now, if you remember, something I do like is the Army Tech implementation. Now, I'm saying that, but there's a problem. If you go to my last review of the... Um, it was of this one, which is the Lumentop HL3A. If you watch that video, you'll see this snap. Now, what's supposed to happen is it would normally look like this, something like that, and the Omitec can clip in and out simply like that. It would normally clip in and out, and then if you want extra secure, you'd put this rubber band over the top, which is fine. But it's not fine, is it? Because look, it's broken. So I've had to talk to um, Army Tech and beg them for another one and say, look, come on, you've got a good warranty system. Can I have a new one? And they're going to send me a new one. So although these are extremely robust, I mean, I've dropped this one. Look, uh, where is it? Yeah, I've dropped this loads of times. I smashed it around, thrown it about, still working. 10 metre drop rating on that. But the headband, although I love the design, not up to scratch. And then you've got something like the Olight's implementation. Now, Olight's implementation, this is for the H2R Nova. Uh, in fact, I'll show you that there. This is the H2R Nova. There you go. So, now look, that's magnetic. Only problem is, it's only magnetic to a point. Watch. There, it will come out. If you're jumping around, you can hear it coming out. There, it'll, it'll slip out. I, I love that design, but you, you really, you have to use this over the top. If you don't use that, you, you're going to lose it if you're jumping about. Now, I really like that design, but this is even better. So let, what have they done here? Well, let's have a look. It's sort of like a spring-loaded. You can see it's got a bit of give in it. And then this is spring-loaded, but it's all metal. So watch what happens. So you come to use your light. You just you simply press it in. So imagine this is against your head. You simply press it in. Clip. Done. And then when you want to look at something further, further towards the floor, you can rotate down. If you want to look at things further away, you can rotate up, or if you want to look up in the trees, you can rotate all the way. You've got like 180 degrees here you can go through. You can even put it back on yourself if you want to warm your forehead. And then when you want to take it out, what I do is I use both hands and I put like, I put my thumbs behind and then I pull like that and it comes out perfectly. What a brilliant hard wearing design. Now compare that to the Army Tech, which has snapped. So I like that design, but that's failed. I like this design and I can't imagine this film. So I'm giving them high marks for this. I really like this. So take note all these companies who are making ridiculous, you know, granny's knicker elastic floppy headband things. Please take notice of something like this. They've done a good job. I loved it. I've never had a problem using this. And what's better is I've taken this in and out, in and out millions of times. Now look, I mean, millions is obviously an exaggeration, but I'm just, I, I can't see. There's a few tiny little scuffs. So again, the paint's been brilliant. This has gone in and out on a piece of metal, very tight, in, out, in, out, in, out, like that, and it's still holding up. So again, very, very, very impressed because this is a very smooth finish and this is all nicely smooth. So headband, I loved it. Um, very, very hard wearing look, just thick, nice. When I first saw this, I thought, oh my God, do I really want metal against my forehead? That's going to be very uncomfortable. But I was totally wrong. No, it's absolutely fine. This is almost spring-loaded. It holds it slightly off the forehead so you don't get sweat there. Loved it. So excellent. Well done, Luminite. Well done on that. Okay, so let's move that all out of the way. Let's go through the specs of this. Okay, so this comes with a drop rating of 1.5 metres. So essentially what they're saying is if you are 1.5 metres above the ground and you happen to accidentally push drop it, this should still function according to their figures. I've dropped it once, but uh, it was on mud, uh, sort of gravel and mud. Um, I can't find where the hell it dropped because there's no mark, um, but it certainly lived up to, that would have been around at least one metre anyway. And it was fine. Um, I would like to say that it'd go a bit higher. Um, the Army Techs will do um, 10 metres drop rating, 
which is much much bigger but of course their design is is more bulky i mean look how far down that that tir is whereas this isn't um, and there's this there's, there's good points and bad points for that which we'll go over in a moment okay so ipx rating so ipx just stands for the ip just stands for ingress protection in other words can things get in so this is an ipx8 in other words it's waterproof so what does waterproof mean well in this con context as in ipx8 it means if you put that in water and then there's two meters of water on top of that pushing down trying to get in as long as you've done this threaded section it's secure um, you haven't smashed this at all um, it should stay under two meters of water no problem it, it, now not forever but they're all all the lights are like that even the uh, army tech can only do i think it's 10 meters but not forever um, so if you drop it in the river take it out you'll be absolutely fine um, you're not having to worry about daft flaps because if you remember my one of my pet peeves with a lot of these lights is they have the charging system which is a daft flap and then they say it's waterproof. That's not really, you know, a, a thing flapping about isn't really waterproof. Yeah, you might be okay in the rain, but I wouldn't trust that, especially if I drop it in a river or something like that, whereas you can with this. Um, I've got no problems with, uh, with that. Anyway, so you get a free battery with this. So let's open this up and see what the battery's like. Now, unfortunately, there's good points and bad points. So good points, it's a high capacity. So I'll, I'll show you some of the details there. So it's a Luminite. Uh, rechargeable battery and it's a 3500 milliamp hours that's the capacity um, and there's the model number it's the SCB2-3500 um, and there's your rating there uh, and there's the name again lithium ion nice to see free battery nice to see although with a lot of the night calls will give you a free one there it says oh, you know don't throw in the fire and all that malarkey fair enough the only problem is can you see this here in the same way that, that Olight use a proprietary battery in order to allow it to charge, this has this section, which means if you want to charge, that will work. If you put in your own cell, it isn't going to work, and it has to be a protected battery. I've tried with an unprotected battery, and it doesn't function. So if you are going to use your own battery, bear in mind that means you can't charge. However, um, you can still use these um, other batteries, but it just means you, you lose charging. So I, I just want to make sure people are aware of that. But it, the same can be said of the Olight. In fact, I'll show you that. Here's the Olight H2R Nova, and they've gone for a similar system, same mag charge method. And then what they've done is they've gone for a proprietary battery. It's still an 18650, same size, but again, they've used this extra disc, which allows them to do the charging through this system here. Now, interestingly, you probably think, well, hang on a minute, didn't you do a review on the Olight and you complained? I did, because the proprietary batteries on this cost three times what they should normally cost. However, on this, it's not so bad. It's only about double the price. So that's not too bad, although I would prefer to see them somehow enable you to use normal batteries. Now, if you remember on the Omitech, you can use your own batteries. Yes, I understand. They send you one. Watch, I'll show you. So with it, you get, there you go, you get a normal flat top army tech cell there, okay? Now the, the problem is, so you're probably thinking, okay, so you can use any cell. Well, okay, you can, but there's a drawback for that. What it means is, when you want to charge this, you have to disengage the circuit. So if you remember, boosh, you, you, can, charge it, you can charge it, but you have to disengage it. Okay, and then when it's finished charging, you do that. So you're probably thinking, who cares? You just screw that off a bit. Well, it, that means you can't use this whilst it's charging. Whereas you can with this, but you have to use their battery. So just bear that in mind. So yes, their batteries are double the price of like a, something like a Samsung uh, 30, 30Q, uh, 18650 or something like that. But that's the price you're going to have to pay. So I'll, I'll knock a few a little point off for that, uh, even though it's not it's not as like a rip off on the Olight. So well done, Illuminate. I'm not trying to rip people off too much on the battery. So nice to see. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go through some of the UI features. So it's very simple. It's not quite as complicated and comprehensive as the Army Tech, for example. So I'll just put that down for a second. Right, UI. Okay. So very simple. Once this is engaged. So you press it on and you press it off. Dead symbol. Now there's a few different modes. You've got moonlight, low, medium, high, and turbo. So how do you get them? Now in normal, 
you go through the mode so low medium high low medium high low medium high just by holding it low medium high so you're probably thinking okay where's turbo and where's moonlight to get to moonlight you have to press and hold so there you go press and hold now they're saying that's five lumens for a moonlight i would have preferred to have seen one lumen or just a, under sub lumen something like that sometimes especially up close if you're reading a map you don't want to destroy night vision I would argue that for moonlight, and to call it moonlight, you really want a very, very low lumen output. Um, it's not so bad on a TIR because it spreads out, but I would argue um, you'd probably be better off with a, a moonlight mode of about one lumen, but that's just a personal preference. That's just from many years of outdoor uh, activities. Okay, so that's your moonlight, and then press and hold. So you've got low, that's 80 lumens. Now, bear in mind, their five lumen uh, moonlight mode they're seeing gives you about 25 days run time on the cell that they give you. On low, 80 lumens, they're seeing you get 40 hours. And then you've got medium there, which is about 240 lumens. Um, and they're saying you get about eight hours, 40 minutes. I've always said about 300 lumens is where you'll do most of your work. Um, if it's on your head, you're camping, you're cooking, um, you're outdoors, or you're working on a car engine or something like that. And then high is 630. That's nice, very, very bright there, very nice. They're saying you get about three hours, 40 minutes out of that, which is fair enough. Um, pretty good run times. And then if you want turbo, it's a double click. So we'll do that. There, so that's your maximum there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my heat monitor. Right, there it is. And what we'll do is we'll move that slightly, move it up to there. In fact, we'll put it like that so I can get a surface. There's a surface, so let's see what sort of a temperature we'll get here. Okay, so with an ambient temperature of about 22, 23 degrees, it's only hitting about 30, 34 degrees so far we'll leave that on see how far it goes so very low temperatures although that you could argue this isn't doing max you know massive lumen output i like the fact that this isn't getting too hot and it's stepping down you know i really like that see it's very very slow to that that's the one thing i've noticed about this i wasn't able to get this to step down um Again, most lights, you know if I've got it on turbo for any period of time, there's no way I could do this, watch. See that? There's no way I could do that with many lights. I'll burn my hand. It looks like I've got kryptonite there. This is a very, I wouldn't say heat resistant, but it's very, very good on the heat output. I think they're using a very, very efficient LED. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find out what sort of LED they're using, but it's very, very efficient. There's not a lot of loss through heat. I mean, look. You just wouldn't be able to do that with something like, um, you know, the Wizard Pro, if you put that on full, yes, I understand it's about 1800 lumens, which is more, and you're going to get more heat, but if you run that for any period of time, you can actually smell this coating, it gets so hot. I mean, I'll hold that there now. So that's on their maximum. Now already, it's starting to get too hot. Although they do a great job, because there's a lot of bulk here, there, it's starting to get uncomfortable. That doesn't seem to happen with this, and it cools down rapidly. When I, in in I mean, look in testing, um, this was a joy because it wasn't overheating, and then I was getting stepped down all the time. So they've done a really good job. There's some sort of efficiency going on here, which is excellent. And I wasn't able to get stepped down, and temperatures certainly weren't getting up to the 50 degree levels that you have on some of the other lights. So nice to see. I think they've done a good job there. So we'll put that to one side. So you're probably thinking, okay, so is that it? You've got your moonlight, then your three main modes, then turbo. Now, turbo there was about 1,200 lumens. That's their figures anyway. It, it looks about that. Um, you also have an e-lockout, so it means that you can lock the, lock the system out. So if you press and hold, you'll get some flashes. There's the flashes. And what that means is it will no longer function. That's great because when you put that in a pack, um, I've done it myself many times where you put a light in a pack, you, you Everyone goes camping and you push far too many things in and then by the time you get to camp this has been pressed on by accident um, and you get to camp and you can't see and you can't go for a pee and cook and you've got to borrow, borrow a battery from someone else and you look like an idiot. Not the case with this. Yes, you could argue there are other methods. So if you didn't want to use e-lockout, so we'll press for three seconds again and we're back to normal function. One of the other methods is on most lights is you just disengage the circuit like that doesn't function that you can do that on all lights 
um, you know, especially things like the the uh, the OmniTech, any any of these lights, you just disengage the circuit, and it's a safety feature. It means you don't have to have e-lockout. But the fact that this has is great. It also has memory mode, so it remembers the last mode you're on, takes you straight back. If you're in any mode for a few seconds, it'll always it'll always take you back to exactly the same mode. That's a time-saving feature, and I really like that and I appreciate that. So there's also battery check mode. Now, where's the where's the manual? Watch this. I didn't understand this when I first read it. Where is it? Uh, on off switch moonlight bloody bloody blah, blah, blah key lock the voltage indicator so low power flashes indicate the charging state when the key is locked and opened now when i first read that i thought i haven't got a clue what they're talking about I th this is what i think they mean when you lock it you see the flashes that you get uh, those flashes there are an indication of the charge level of the battery so for example uh, that's Swedish or something. Hang on. Where's it? Where's uh, English? Right. So, th what that means is five flashes. The battery is uh, the capacity is around eighty percent, or over. Sorry, four flashes between sixty and eighty. Three flashes between forty and sixty. Two flashes twenty to forty, and one flash less than twenty. In other words, danger level. You you must charge that immediately, otherwise you're going to start damaging the cell. So, nice extra feature. Okay. So, before I rabbit on for too long, because I really am trying to get these reviews shorter, um, let's talk about pros and cons. There's a lot of pros to this. Excellent build, like I say, the, the anodization has been absolutely fantastic. There's a few little scuffs where it's been in and out of the, um, the headband, but absolutely fantastic. I've dropped it. I mean, the bottom still looks brand new. In fact, I did, looking at the bottom, that's just reminded me, it also comes with a mag base. So, if you take any sort of metallic surface, oof, there you go. So that's very, very handy. You can, I mean, you could argue that's not so handy in the woods because trees aren't made out of metal. But there are, you'll generally find things that you have with you have metal on and you can use, use it in cars, uh, under car bonnets. Um, I've used that in the gym and various other applications. So it does work. Um, so pretty, pretty impressed uh, and it works. It's a good uh, magnetic base. It's not one of these rubbish ones where they're absolutely useless. Okay, so mag base. Um, I really like this, this here, I think that's a winner, that's probably one of the best designs I've seen, I've, that's been a joy to use, I've thoroughly enjoyed that, not had any problems, uh, really really enjoyed it, um, it's been decent quality, so we'll put that to one side, um, it's a good wide TIR, so you're probably thinking what's he talking about TIR, well I'm going to have to go over this quickly, even though people hate it, I think it bears, it bears going over. Okay, so on most lights, what you have is you've got your LED, okay? So imagine this is a cross-section, and your light comes out, and it goes all over the place. It goes willy-nilly, and it's a lot of it's flooded out and wasted, basically. So you need some method of sort of um, getting a bit of control over this light. Now, your first method is a smooth reflector. So if you imagine, this is an example of a smooth reflector. So you can see the LED in the middle there, and then around it, you have this smooth reflector. It's a smooth metallic surface here okay so an example of cross cross section wise anyway would be there's your smooth reflector and your led so you get light directly from the led which is your spill and it hits the wall like that and then you get directed light from the, the design of the reflector and then there's your spot there now i'll show you that in actuality so here's the hc65 by nightcore we'll turn that on now here, here you can see here's your spill and then you've got spot in the middle. Now, can you see the problem? That's completely obscure in detail. If you were disarming a bomb or trying to tie a shoelace, it's not very useful, is it? Yes, you can, you can pull this away and pull this away and pull this away from the target, or you can reduce the lumen output, but basically, it's not ideal for up close work. What it is ideal for is making the light travel distance. If you want to try and get over to the middle of a field or into some trees, this is an excellent design. Unfortunately, it's not so good for up close. So what's what's your alternative? Well, one of the alternatives is, and again, this is a cross section. If you use an orange peel reflector, sometimes shortened to OP, you still get your spill there, and then you get your directed light, which is your spot. But there's a transition between the two zones, so they're less pronounced. So an example of that would be the cheap SP40 by Sofern. So if we zoom in on that, you can see the LED in the middle, but can you see the reflector? It's no longer perfectly smooth. It's got purposeful pits and aberrations in it. So what does that do? Okay, well, we'll turn it on and find out. Eh? So can you see you've got your spot? I know this is at a different level at the HC65, but I'm just trying to give you a basic idea here. So you've still got your spill, 
and then your spot here you see how it's still obscure in detail but certainly not at the same level so what what happens there then okay so what happens is this gives you maximum distance this gives you better sort of medium range you don't get this as good distance as that but it's also better up close because it's not obscure in detail more and people prefer that the extreme example of up close work is if you use a tir so if you have your led here and you again this is a cross section and you place over the top a solid piece of material now this is called a tir which stands for total internal refraction in other words the light is reflected refracted within this medium and then it leaves as dictated on the design of the TIR. So as you can see on this one, this is luminite here. So if we zoom in on that, you can see what they've done is, there's the solid piece of material. Now on the surf surface there, they've got what, what are called micro lenses. So what they're aiming for is they want a nice, floody, diffuse beam. So we'll show you what that looks like. So if I turn this on, in fact, hang on, did I lock this out? I can't remember. I think I might have locked it out. Yes, I did. Okay, right. So we'll turn this up a bit. So even at this level, you've still got something of a spill in a spot. This is essentially your, your, your main power here, but it's not obscuring detail to the same level. Watch. I've got that on a very, very high level there, but look, I can still perfectly read that. It's slightly obscuring it, but this, look, this, there is this... The, you can hardly see the boundary of where the light stops. It's a beautiful diffuse beam that goes on and on and on, nice and wide. And it's another reason why I like this light. Um, um, one of the things you really want, and I argue for, is when you're out walking, and I'll get rid of this. So let, let's see, there's me out walking, okay? Minding my own business, tra -la, 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 la running around, and I've got a headlamp on. Now, a lot of these, the problem is with a lot of headlamps, and I'll show you an example. So for example, something like this. Yes, it's orange peel, but you don't get a very wide beam because the, the LED is set back and this isn't very wide. So what happens is you get a beam and it goes on the ground like that. Now when you're walking quickly or you're mountaineering or certain things, trail running and things like that, you need a lot of peripheral vision, I would argue anyway. I'm no expert in this, but I like a lot of peripheral vision. The more peripheral vision you've got, the better. It gives your eyes more information to feed your brain for balance and things like that so if you compare that to something like the sp40 there's the sp40 look at the difference see how it's a lot wider and it's more open you get a wider beam this this just allows more light out at, a, at more of an angle so what happens is you get more of an angle like this your brain is given more information and it's more pleasant. I mean, if you imagine trying to do anything in life and restricting your vision to it, something like that, it becomes irritating. Yes, you can move your head and look, but it's irritating. The more vision you get, the better, even though you're not necessarily looking at it all at the same time because you have blind spots, but it, it, it's better on the eyes, I would argue. Now, a good example of that would be the, uh, the compass here. Again, nice wide beam. They've angled this and it's not set back too much. Um, although you get a lovely wide beam on the Wizard, uh, Wizard, uh, I think this is the Wizard Pro V3 by Armitech here, this actually does a better job because it's not set back as far. Can you see how it's further forward? Yes, this gives you a better drop rating, but do you need 10 meter drop rating or would you rather have this, which gives you a better wider beam? I prefer this. That's one of the reasons why I mock the SP40, even though it's a really, really, really cheap light and I don't like the flap, the beam, they did an excellent job because they made it nice and wide that's the whole point of a headlamp it allows you to do work and run and walk and things like that so well done for doing that i think they've, they've made an intelligent choice here so well done for that so let, let, let's stop barking on about beams okay so put that to one side okay so back to the pros so that's something i like the tir um, it's got magnetic charging which is brilliant yes you've got to use their batteries but they're not rip off like the olight ones and you can use your own batteries as long as they're protected but then you can't use the charging so bear that in mind you get a nice five-year warranty brilliant i'm a big fan of that that to me says they will stand behind their product um, so i've got no problems there well done you get a free battery which is fair enough it's got a lockout if you need it even though again on most of them you can disengage the circuit um 
what else you can use it whilst it's charging now i think that's a big massive plus for people who do uh, hiking i have used that feature myself when i've been sat around fires and things um and it extends your usage into the night when you you, you would normally be turning it off and, and preserving battery again another good feature so what are the cons then well proprietary battery but they're not too much of a rip-offs but i will knock off a point for that but by using a proprietary battery it means you can use it whilst it's charging without having to use a daft flappy flap you know like some of them you get so it swings in roundabouts on on the goods and bad points uh, price is very high on this but again it's a premium item and um, you can bash it around and drop it and it's still going to work um, and it's got good waterproofing and i mean it's it looks bulletproof so far um, it's done really well there's that one little ding that i found um, but I did whack it about. Uh, I dropped this on some gravel and mud. Uh, maybe that's when I got that. But it's done fantastic. It's nice and light. Um, streamline. Good design. I mean, that still looks brand new on the bottom there, the mag base. It hasn't picked up any grit or anything when I dropped it. Um, and I would have pre possibly preferred a slightly lower moonlight mode. But these are little, little niggles. Um, so, and I love this. I love the headband. Okay, so let's give this a mark out of 10. So mark out of 10, I'm going to give this 9. I have to because there's a massive, I mean look, excellent build, mag base, good TIR, mag, mag charging, 5 year warranty which they'll stand behind, brilliant armband that I like, it's got e-lockout, it's got a turbo which doesn't go, go nuclear and melt the, melt the skin off your hand, again another feature, you don't want a red hot thing, you know like a piece of kryptonite on your forehead, so well done there, you're getting a free battery, um, there's, there's just a lot to like. Um, and only a few things that I would change and maybe it's just me being a whinge but I have to I have to be honest and I have to whinge about these things so I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10 uh, I wish it was a bit cheaper I would I would probably make the moonlight mode a little bit lower um, and some people might not like the proprietary battery but again I've explained that um, and this will they're rating the charge on this to at least 500 cycles so that's probably going to last you years how often do you charge your lights be honest think about that okay so 9 out of 10 um, I mean I'll quickly show you some other lights just for comparison um, you've got the cheapy this is the uh, the Convoy H1 um, again very cheap and awful uh, headband so you probably wouldn't consider that and then you've got the Army Tech so Army Tech you're getting a 10 meter drop rate and 10 meter waterproofing um, but you can't use this whilst it's charging so what is it that you want and this is slightly cheaper than the luminite which is interesting i mean you could argue you can wait and get these on sale but you can do the same on the luminite so um, some people may prefer this although to be honest do you want a headband that this happens to probably not i certainly don't because i was very annoyed when that happened but never mind not the end of the world i mean that's got mag charging the same uh, but you have to disengage it to charge it and then when it's finished charging you re-engage it that's a bit of a nuisance whereas this just charges like the olight uh, but it's just an option there i mean i, I probably might do a video in future and um, directly comparing these because they're very similar look in design they've got the, the same sort of similar heat sink design at the bottom there um, same TIR, although I would argue this TIR is better, it's wider, not so deep set, although you, that reduces the uh, drop rating, but how much, how much drop rating do you need, you know, are you going to drop it off the Himalayas? Um, very similar, they've got the same similar button, um, I prefer this button because it's slightly recessed, that isn't, although it does have a little flash that you can put on there. Um, but that has done very well. I know a lot of people don't like the Army Text because they, they, they don't like all the text all over it. They think all oh, this advertising, it's like wearing a Nike t-shirt. Yeah, okay, it doesn't bother me, but um, that's just something you might want to bear in mind. So there's another of your comparisons. I'll put them like that. Um, another light that I looked at, um, and I should have mentioned um, the Army Tech will do 1800 lumens on the Pro anyway. That's around 1000, um, and this is 1200 that they're quoting on the Luminate. Okay, so another, if you want something smaller but more of a right angle, here's the, uh, it's the Lumen Top HL3A. I really like this. This is a triple emitter. It's TIR, but it's slightly different design, as you can see. Um, that's nice and wide as well. They've done a good job on that, but it's a different type of TIR. So there's a little bit of flower petaling up close, but nothing major. Good output from that. I really enjoyed that. And they actually did okay on the headband, although it's not not always the type I like. They went for one of these ones, but it's not it's not dead floppy look. It's got a bit of rigidity to it. Much better, and it's a three pointer. Okay, so we'll pop that out of the way. One other thing that you might want to go for is like an all in one, which is the this is the Nightcore HC65, so this, this does everything. Um, you can't take it out of the headband, though, look. 
It's a three point headband, but that doesn't come out. It's got battery check, it's got charging built in behind the threaded section, so you haven't got daft flaps. Um, it's got one button to do everything, one button to rule them all. So you turn it on and turn it off. It's actually got a 180 degree um, spill on that as well, which I quite like. You can see that's quite wide if you look at my hand and what, what the spill is doing there. So pretty good. Um, you've got various modes on that, and then if you press and hold, You've got a red light mode. I've used that for walking. It's just enough to walk by. And I think you get um, quite a long run time out of that. I've used it for astrophotography and things like that. Um, I wouldn't use it for night, night hiking. It's not enough. And then if you half press, you've got a high CIR mode, so which comes from this. So I'll show you that. If I, can, if I can get it to work, there you go. So this gives you more of a high CIR value. CIR just stands for Colour Rendering Index. I'm not going to go into it on this one because this isn't what this video is about. This is a, a simple, or I'm trying to make it a simple and quick headlamp uh, review anyway. Um, and that is coming through a TIR. You get about 24 hours out of that from the battery that they give you. And as you can see, that's a TIR setup, whereas that's smooth. Still like the HC65. I think they've done a good job. One of your other options, if you want to go really cheapy, is the Sofirm SP40. But again, you're not getting the you're not getting the quality of that. I mean, look. Finish wise, it's already sort of coming coming off and turning silver, um, and it's got one of these daft flaps. The waterproofing is nowhere near what you're going to get on the Luminite. Another option you might might want to consider, although I found this way too big and way too heavy, is the Astrolux HL01. Interestingly, it does have auxiliary LEDs if you like that sort of thing, but it looks like something a chef would use to tenderize a pork chop. Unfortunately, now interestingly. They have hidden their charging system behind the thread section. Again, another win, and it's double O-ringed. There you go, and it's USB Type-C, which I really like. But just something you might want to bear in mind. But that's just one of your other options, but be very big and very heavy. And when it comes to headlamps, you don't want them to be big and you don't want them to be heavy. I mean, look, I'll show you. Look at the difference. Massive, massive difference. And this is much more sort of usable and, and better. So it's a shame. I don't know why they did that on the Astrolux. Another couple of quick options. I don't really want to belabor this too much, but you've got the Olight H2R Nova. Very similar TIR design, if you have a look. Very, very similar there. Obviously, they've got the blue accent on the Olight here, um, but the Olight's slightly bigger there. A um, little bit more bulky, but nice job. You get two tints on this. You can have the normal and there's the warm tint. This only comes in one tint, which is, I would argue, this is just slightly proud and slightly more of uh, up from um something like a neutral in fact we'll compare it to, this is a basic neutral so mid mid range and then you've got this one which is actually so that one it's slightly more whitish so so if you imagine you've got a scale so you've got your your warm tint on the left here and your white light on the right and th you know this is probably in the middle this is slightly higher towards the um the white end of the scale but certainly not a cool white it's probably around 5000 k or just over 5500 k again i wasn't able to find out which led they're using okay if you want to go for mega power you could go for something like the fireflies pl47 gen 2 here quad emitter bigger battery 21700 no charging but you get the mag base and a big sort of headband if you want it gets very hot very quickly but massive output on that but it's very heavy do you want that flopping on your head i didn't have any problems with it but i certainly wouldn't run with that one very big and heavy um, and if you want something slimline you could go for the skill hunt h03 there's a h i think there's an h04 out soon uh, oh in fact it's already out but all they did was change the ui so basically the same as this um, i really like this this is tir nice floody beam beautiful um, slim slimline piece of kit but you're not getting a, a mag charging you're not getting the extended run times and the tir certainly isn't as big and, and wide as this and the output on this is better okay so moving them out of the way so nine out of ten i think they've done an exceptional job well done luminate i'd never heard of you but you've done a damn good job and um, there's a few things i would change but maybe that's just me okay enough of me waffling let's get outside and see what it looks like <laughs> 